Why do horns and musical instruments have this flared shape? To answer this question, about a year ago, I decided I would take this and scale it up to this. And I've never, we need to first talk about how hearing works and what I eventually learned about why horns have that curved shape. Let's say this jello block represents a volume of air molecules. If that horn diaphragm hits the jello molecules over here, there's a chain reaction of jello molecules crashing into each other until finally you see movement on the other side of the jello block. And this is where your eardrum is. So it moves back and forth at the same rate as the horn diaphragm because of all of these collisions of the jello molecules in between. This is called a pressure wave and it's how sound travels travels through air. And so if the horn diaphragm is hitting the air molecules at a high frequency, or very frequently, our brain decodes that as a high pitch. But if the crashes are happening at a low frequency, or less frequently, then our brain decodes that as a low pitch. Okay, but why the curvy horn shape? Well that has to do with something called impedance matching. Basically the horn diaphragm is very solid and strong, and it pushes against the air, which doesn't offer much resistance. It's not very effective, like trying to break a piece of paper by punching it. So without the curvy horn portion, as the diaphragm moves back and forth, it interfaces with the air sort of like this. You can still see the jello is moving on the opposite side, just not that much, because the air is just too thin and weak over this small of an area. So to have a better interface with the air, you put a big curvy shape right after the diaphragm. You can see now your eardrum is moving back and forth much more vigorously, because the interface is so much better. So it sounds louder with a curved horn, not because you're amplifying the sound, but because you're conserving the sound. This makes sense because amplifying means you're adding power to the system and there's no battery or plugs at the curved section of a horn, it's passive. So by impedance matching, you give yourself a much larger area to push against all the air at the outlet, which makes for a more effective chain reaction of molecules crashing into your eardrum. And now the horn. Is that pretty loud? Wow, that's so cool! Is that pretty good? <laughs> yeah. This actually isn't a horn, it's that. Oh. Behind you, now you can look. Oh my! <laughs> like eight months of work. That's the first time we've actually fired off. And that's behind the horn. I could feel the vibrations. Yeah. Not even in front of the thing. And guys, hello. Now I have to narrate a little bit to tell you more. Because not everything I can write. So why I'm telling this? Why I show you this? This is old story, well known, nothing special. But watch next. Uh, one Russian guy made a simple experiment, just very, very simple. You know, it's hard to believe and understand how simple is it. He took normal idea of capacitor, of normal capacitor. It's two plates, just two plates go into each other. But what if we vibrate it? He's talking about a fear, a terror and so on. And he just decided to measure it a little bit. He took two plates and he tried to vibrate it. And he's talking a little bit about ethere, how it acts, what is proton, electron, and so on. But idea was simple. He took this, this surface, and these two pushers, okay? He made it conductive, because he decided to uh, take some energy, not necessarily electric, but argon, ether, whatever, energy, and conductor. He put some wires. His idea is to draw you a picture. Now, just brief explanation, then he, may, he will make experiment. So, idea is to collect the ether, ether, whatever, charges to capacitor. So, the idea, take energy from ether. How we can do it? Maybe it reminds you something. Yeah, it really looks like any capacitor. Simple capacitor with two plates. Yes, yeah, there are many surfaces. Some flat or round and so on. Many ways, many different capacitors. So, this also reminds something. Like Leyden jar or ele electrolytic capacitor. It can be electrolytic, whatever we can take any capacitor to collect charges, to keep it. So hypothetically, this system can be done very easily. So let's check it step by step. OK, 
okay? Everyone can make this flat capacitor, uh, but make it a little bit bigger, because we need a little bit more energy. Let's take a look at this. It's easiest manipulations, what we do, piece of plastic and some something to hold it. So it's not conductive, it's hot glue, hold it so no, nothing conductive, it's not metallic. So energy cannot come from hands, from person. It's just, let, let's say, one plate, one side of capacitor. So we have one, we need second one, definitely. The same, easy one. Anyone can copy it. It's another part of capacitor. So we have two sides of capacitor. I don't know how to say in English, but any capacitor has two sides. So what we, we will do, we'll make vibrations like this. We will get some energy from ether, ether. So let's measure it. Of course, we have some wires to have something to measure. So simple way. Somehow, just you can melt it, you can glue it, you can do everything. Just put it together. And we have some measuring device. Simple test, multimeter. And we use any, any multimeter, you know, anyone can use it. If here, it uh, air has some current, current inside. Space has current, so it's everywhere in the space inside. We just cannot measure it somehow because all our devices are designed to measure something, you no know, AC or DC energies, which not normally in area in nature. So how we gonna do it? What we do next? Of course, we will push the space between it. We will initiate some energy in ether, ether between it. How we do it? We, we will use some material stuff, I mean, some plates, any shape to direct ether, ether. We're gonna direct it by vibration, just some movement, simple movement. Not high frequency, very low frequency. What we do? It cannot be electrostatic, definitely. He talks a lot about it. Later he will show you some energy from electrostatic. What we will do? Let's see. Wow, what we have? Even first simple movement makes some energy. Let's make some changes in the scale. 20 volts. And measure once again. A little bit harder. What we see? 3, 4 volts. It's between 2.5 up to 4. What we do? About 3 volts, it's normal. Simple design. Simple experiment. But it shows that energy coming from some vibrations, some movement. What we do? We can use any direction of any movement because no, perpendicular or parallelly, it doesn't matter. Because that's how we deal with ether, ether. Ether consists of positrons, electrons, and so on, neutrons, and we separate it, and those plates, foil, aluminum foil, collect and harvest all these uh, electrons or whatever energy and send it to virus. It's very simple. So that's how we can make energy using simple vibrations. Any vibrations can be used to produce energy, and it's enough to light uh, light diodes, small lamp, very small. Uh, I will make a link in the description below. We're gonna need a capacitor for it, simple capacitor, electrolytic, but it does matter. It's pretty big for this amount of energy, and we will gonna we will put some energy into this capacitor, electrolytic capacitor. But it's DC. What we can do about it? We can put some diodes on it to keep harvested energy. The energy we harvest from ether, ether, 
just simply using vibrations. So it's simple schema. Look at this. Simple diode. Even one diode is enough to harvest some energy and keep it. It means minus. Look. It's normal. Mm. Normal capacitor. Let's take a look what we will have. We will take capacitor. Two diodes. To make AC and convert it to DC. Discharge it completely, make it zero. To make sure there is no energy inside capacitor. Make clear experiment. So we know that we're going to have DC current. And make some connection. Connect it to plates. And repeat experiment. And what we will have? It looks shitty, really. Awful. But schema is the same. Idea is the same. Two plates of capacitor, bipolar capacitor, very simple. The simplest, even simpler than a plate in jar. Let's check what we're gonna have. Let's move. And what we see? If we had some electrostatic, it's passed in first applause. But we applause more and more. And what we see here? It's a pretty big condensator and a lot of leaks inside. And diodes also take some charges. We cannot get a huge amount of energy, but we will get it, as you see. But what if this huge horn antenna and horn will start to work? Will start to vibrate and take some energy from top and send it down. How much energy we can harvest? Just imagine from vibrations and from the antenna uh, emitting devices on it. Because it's horn antenna, it also increase the power. All power we have we harvest from the sky, from top. And we are sending it down. It's in Italy. What if we harvest using this antenna, wide brand, wide band antenna, and send it to this horn for vibrations? Again, improve it with capacitors and with uh, resonators, these ball resonators, and send it down to this drum and also to another horn, so multi-layer horns sending energy throughout the space using bells also to initiate vibrations vibrations all, always on top also just think about it guys and please write in comments what do you think about it thank you